No, that just means he likes you. What? No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. That's gross. <laughs> Trust me, that's what boys do. So if I pinch him back, he's gonna think I like him back? No, boys are too stupid to get that. <laughs> Where are you going? On the front lawn, mother. Is that okay with you? Jesus Christ. I'm waiting up for Heather. Oh, that's my job, baby. Nine out of ten times, teenagers just want to piss off their parents. She's probably hiding out at friends, and she'll be home tomorrow. Try to find your sister. I'll go with you. I want to find her, too. Thank you so much for making time to speak with me, but more importantly, thank you so much for putting together this uh, great emotional film. Um, you know, uh, we're going to talk about this, but for folks who uh, haven't had the chance to see this, um, this for me was such a tearjerker and to make a, a, a movie about something that has been going on for years and is something that should never be happening. I have to applaud you for the way you approach this and put this together. Um, I can just say is congratulations for doing what you get, what you've been able to do. Oh, thank you so much. That's quite the way to start the interview. and <laughs> quite the, uh, humbled by your comments. Thank you. I I think it was um, I think it was over well long overdue in terms of actually making a film on this subject matter. But at the same time, um, I want to make sure that it was done in a respectful way, with respect for the families that have gone through this, but also a film that still had a message of you know, love and light and hope, which is not always easy to do when you're tackling such a dark subject matter. Absolutely. Let's talk about first what this film is called and what it's about. And it's basically the story of an eight-year-old girl named Ivy who's trying to understand what happened to her big sister, Heather, who, you know, one day just didn't come home from school. And uh, basically what happens is when Ivy's mom kind of hits all those walls in terms of, like, trying to find answers, they, um, they hit the road and they follow the, the, the clues that they have uh, to try to find Heather. So it's kind of a sad road movie, I guess you could say. But uh, because Ivy is such a positive, bubbly, fun uh, little girl, um, the movie still has lots of light and uh, maybe not humor, but definitely parts that can make you smile. What I found interesting was um, how the approach that you took, the individuals, the relationship between the sisters, the relationship between the mom and the missing sister, the relationship between the mom and her daughter, and the relationship of the family dealing with the missing the missing daughter, missing sister, but also as you called and we'll use the term the walls and how the walls um treated basically the family. Yeah, and honestly that was all just based on the the research that I did when I was writing the script. I read all these stories of what the families had to go through and those are the roadblocks that they hit. Basically, like the lack of interest from the general population, um, you know, the relationship with authorities, with, with police officers uh, for lots of these families is not an easy one. Uh, there's a lack of trust there. There's uh, prejudice and all that stuff. So I think that I, I think it was important to, to, to show that. But at the same time, it was even more important to show the 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 love and the resilience of these families and like you said it is about relationships because that's what life is about and if you know for the families that have gone through this they had to lean on each other to to you know to survive but also to try to find answers so that was definitely key I think to telling the story but also key to creating empathy with the audience so that people would would feel uh, you know would would be attached basically to those characters and to those relationships is this also a way of getting people to understand what is going on in, with uh, indigenous women going missing as you mentioned the way the authorities are treating this the fact that there are so many going on and many times it's a tragic ending to what happens um 
was this a way to educate people and also when did and how did you decide to get involved with well, I think basically a lot of people at this point are are somewhat aware that this is an issue, right? Like it's been, it's it was almost, you know, uh, it was a political issue for a while. Are we going to have a national inquiry? What does that mean? So there were, so I think people were more and more aware, but they don't necessarily understand what the families go through. I think the statistics, they see the numbers, you know. I think the general sense or the general population thinks, oh, okay, that's too bad. Uh, but they don't feel for the families, right? They don't, they don't feel concerned by it because I guess there's, there's, you know, I, I preconceived maybe judgment on these, about these families or, or I, you know, there are many factors maybe why people are not necessarily interested, but I feel like with fiction, when you're writing a story and when you're building characters, you're actually, you're reaching out to people that may not be interested in the subject matter, right? They might not be looking to understand more about in missing and murdered Indigenous women. They just want to watch a film, like a drama, but then you hook them <laughs> on emotion. You get them to feel for these, these characters and this family, and then automatically they, they become more interested in learning more about missing and murdered Indigenous women. So that was kind of my approach, was to tell a compelling story, and then hopefully these people, if they were moved and if they felt for Susan and Ivy, well, hopefully they're gonna, that's going to be their takeaway. They're going to they're going to think, well, wait a minute, is this really happening in our country? How often is it happening? Who is it happening to? And why is it happening? So instead of like giving the numbers and giving the information like a documentary would, um, I kind of took another approach. I went with the gut, right? I went for the heart. Heart, and then hopefully that is the hook that leads them to learning more and to educating and to be more aware. I'm curious, though, because watching this, and I know I've talked to other actors and actresses when they do films like this, what was it like for them to portray these characters uh, and how did it affect them emotionally? It was definitely, I think for a seasoned actor like Carmen Moore, it was definitely a, a, a roller coaster of emotion because just like so many Indigenous women in this country, we, we each come with our own baggage <laughs> and our own, um, you know, knowledge of, of the situation and our own, um, you know, personal experience in terms of, of victimization or racism and all those things. So I think Carmen was, was, quite emotional in a lot of the scenes and also understanding what it meant to tell this story, right? To tell the story of, of a missing, uh, a missing teenager, how heavy that is. And so we, we, we allowed ourselves to take time to live our own emotions once in a while. Like we, we allowed, mm -hmm. we gave Carmen the space to, to kind of feel what she had to feel. And we, we also leaned on each other. Like I was surrounded by, by really amazing indigenous women on, on set. And um, so we were very protective of each other. And we, you know, at one point, Lake's mom even told me, you know what, all these, all these missing or murdered women, their spirits are with us right now. And they're helping us tell that this story. And that for me was just, oof, you know, it was very emotional to hear, but at the same time, it felt good to know that, we had that support to, to be able to tell the story. And I think for Lake, um, the fact that I had her mom with me really helped us kind of feel the, like the, to get the feel of what she was able to process. So if some scenes were maybe a bit too mature, or too, you know, hard to go down the, like the psychology of the character or the scene, well, I would, I, I would twist it in another way and we, you know, I, I, I try to compare it to another type of situation to get the desired reaction or emotion, you know? So, so, but I would use her, like, I would, I would turn to her mom to see, you know, okay, what do you think? Because of course it's a film, you want to get the, you know, the best performances, but at the same time, we're talking about people here and I, I'm like, like in no way, shape or form did, did we, did I want to like traumatize anyone? Right. So, so it was kind of just being open to what we were really, really feeling and, and making sure that we were all doing our craft and our work in a safe environment. I do believe that you, you can feel that. You can, definitely, you can definitely feel that on the screen when you watch. Um, 
what did the families think? And I'm, I'm, and again, I'm just assuming the families had a chance to, to see this film. Um, I, well, that's the thing. We, when we started screening this film, like at first this film, it was in like a, in the festival circuit, right? So we had mm-hmm. screenings and I naively didn't foresee the reaction that we would get with, with some families. Of course, of course, at the beginning, at the top of the film, we have like a little disclosure, like a little, um, in writing, we put like, if, if, if this is too much, these are, you know, hotlines that you can call. Um, I wasn't prepared to receive all that at the end of the screening. So from the end of the first screening, when people started to share their own stories, uh, see right now, just talking about it, I get really emotional because it was quite emotional. Um, I realized that for the screenings that we will have in communities eventually after this pandemic is done (laughs) and we travel into communities with this film, we need to bring support because I'm just a filmmaker. (laughs) I, I, I don't have the right answers for for people who 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 watch the film and it and it might open something and and again like I said earlier it was in no way my intention of of hurting or traumatizing I think that, that a lot of the families actually shared that it was good to see this and they felt good to actually share there were some people that even said that they you know they hadn't spoken about their sister or their cousin in like 30 years and at the end of the screening was actually the first time they were talking about it um that to me was incredibly powerful and i felt so privileged to actually be a part of that but at the same time i didn't have the tools to have the right answers so i know that now and and i know that when we do travel with the film or have it screen in communities we'll make sure that we're providing the help for those for those families um the very first screening that we did was in my community in Ganesadage and that was that was incredible because I wanted their blessing before the film was shown anywhere else before any other audience was allowed to see it and basically what they said that they 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 saw the film as as a healing tool and that was like oh okay (laughs) So yes, it's hard. Yes, we're talking about um, something that's incredibly difficult to talk about. But the fact that it's it's seen that way as as possibly helping people heal, then I feel like it has its place in the world right now. You know. Speaking of place in the world right now, is this to me? I feel like this is definitely the right time to to have this out. Because with the world has changed with COVID-19, but more importantly, to uh, racism being spoken in such a different manner to me. And I just want to get your thoughts of people being now more open to these subjects and do these things going on um, and realizing that, you know, certain people who consider themselves, well, I shouldn't say consider themselves, the word the word privilege being put out there now, people are being more open, going, well, wait a minute. There are other things going on in the world and not just for what, you know, the way I live. Oh, definitely. I think it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely timely. Just as an example, a few years ago when I started thinking about this film, um, the first way of seeing things, I think I wanted to do a documentary um, and I got shut down left and right. There was no interest in it whatsoever, even though, you know, within our indigenous communities, we were like, what? Are you kidding me? Don't you see the importance of this? So just the fact that this film was made and funded, um, you know, right there and then there's a shift in the way that we that, that we see the subject matter, but also see indigenous led teams and indigenous stories. But in the bigger landscape of, of of racism i i even see it with people who comment on the film or write to me like there are people that are way more open to having the conversation now and recognizing their own privilege and understanding the world that we live in and the the uh the you know the the need for equality and the need for justice those are conversations that i've never had before with my audience with other projects there's always been like this almost like a pushback or a um people would detach themselves from the subject. They'll try to look at it in a very like uh, factual manner, but but not really including themselves in that. And now I feel like the conversation has definitely changed. 
um, in, in a good way, in a good way. Like, and, and just the fact that the film is played in, cause we had like a, 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 a theatrical run. Um, the fact that it did play in theaters and it was programmed in festivals that wasn't, you know, that weren't necessarily exclusive to indigenous filmmakers or indigenous films. I feel that that as well is a sign that there's, there's an openness for these stories now and not just an openness. There's, there's a need for it. People actually want to see these stories. They want, they want to know more about it. So I'm very hopeful in that sense. When do we get a chance to see this? So the film is out on all platforms on November 17th. Uh, So Apple TV, Vimeo on demand, Bell on demand, all the usual. Thank you so much for this interview. More importantly, thank you for putting together this film, which I know people are going to uh, really take to their hearts because I definitely (sighs) did. And, um, Let's talk again on your next project because I cannot wait to see and hear what you're going to be doing. Because if it's anything like what you, what I've got, a ch- what I haven't had a chance to see, I can just see more incredible things coming through your beautiful mind. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> it's very sweet. Thank you very, very much. Thanks for the great conversation. Thank you. Oh, before you go, social media. Where do we go to follow you for everything else you're going to be doing? Oh, I, well, I'm on Instagram. Uh, I'm not on Twitter anymore. There was too much hate there. I want to steer away from hate. I don't blame you. Easy to find on Instagram, easy to find on, on Facebook. And uh, you can look at the website for the film as well. And you can shoot me an email. I'm pretty easy to find. Fantastic. Thank you again. Be safe. And hopefully we'll get a chance to talk soon. And hopefully we'll get a chance to talk in person. That would be great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Just want to find Heather and bring her home. I just want her here. 